around these parts. Um, I'm familiar with the uh, concept of revolting on behalf of the indigenous peoples. We do it a lot back home. We've had to because we're resource rich up our way. And uh, they're exploiting a lot of the resources. As of course, you know, the tar sands and uh, uranium for years. Uh, back in the 80s, I was asked to go get some stories from northern Ontario. There's about uh, 136 reservations in Ontario, Canada alone. Uh, most of those reservations in northern Ontario have been suffering from Ontario hydro exploitation, uh, uranium mining, silver mining, uh, iron ore, uh, you, know, you name it, plutonium. And uh, in northern Ontario specifically, they found a swath of something called chromite, which is what they make stainless steel from. And northern Ontario has always been kind of a sacred, unrelinquished territory of beautiful lakes and trees. Uh, much like the uh, forest down in Central and South America, which provides much of the oxygen for the planet. And uh, it's apparent that uh, they've elected kind of a left-wing, uh, uh, you know, he's attached to a lot of different things, including kind of a, you know, skinhead movement almost. And uh, they've really been ambitious and undermining because uh, half of Canada is still in land claim from our treaties and... Uh, all of our negotiations for centuries of time. And um, <clears throat> the best way to undermine them is to make the reservations no more. So they're trying to undermine our, our ability to uh, govern ourselves in the tribal, and well, they call them bank councils over there. Unfortunately, they're run by the Department of Indian Affairs, which is uh, very uh, bureaucracy heavy. So most of the money goes into the bureaucracy of the Indian Affairs. Very little of the money trickles down to the people for education. We've had to fight for education back as early as 1970 to take control of our education and to educate our people with our own language. And now our languages are growing strong again in Canada, both on uh, you know, Iroquois languages, the Cree, the Ojibwe. We should go farther west, the more Cree. Uh, uh, Salish, uh, all the western West Coast tribes, and of course all the pipeline work and all of that. So it's really a movement, a political movement, a social movement, and a means to uh, make all the other people aware of uh, the indigenous movement that, that we're trying to protect all the water because they're really the biggest issue is going to be the water within 10 years. There's so little fresh water in the world now, only 4% of the world planet has fresh water. So that's a huge issue. And California is very hungry for water. So they're going to pipe water. They're flushing, of course, uh, Navajo, they've been flushing uh, coal with fresh water for years. And uh, so some of these things we got to speak up and stand up for, or nothing's going to change. And it's up we're usually to the indigenous people lead this struggle. So I thank all the people that are here today, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, personally with you if you have any more questions about what I've just said. So thank you very much. Dance hard and sing. That's what it's all about, to get together and socialize in a good way and try not be confrontational with uh, the people who uh, have uh, a time issue. So thank you so much again. Oh, how will go. Thank you.